This is a continuation of chapter 64, Physiology, sec uh, sec Secretory, Secretory, goodness, Function of the GI Tract. Starting off here, we'll talk a little bit about saliva. When saliva is produced in your mouth, originally it comes out, it has about the same ion concentration as plasma. However, rapidly, the sodium potassium pump is gonna extract sodium from your saliva and release potassium into your saliva. Also, the chlorine is gonna follow the sodium because there's a positive and negative charge that like to follow each other. And it's gonna swap that out for HCO3. And so what are you going to have in your saliva? Lots of HCO3 and potassium. And that's going to have low amounts of sodium and chlorine as opposed to plasma. Okay, so now let's go on here to what's exactly happening in your stomach. So starting off, in the proximal 80% of your stomach, meaning that's upper part up here as opposed to the lower part, um, you have a lot of different kinds of cells. You have these gastric glands in this 80 80, uh, approximal 80% of your stomach. And at the towards the top of these gastric glands are mucus cells that secrete mucus, obviously. Down in the middle, so this is over towards the top, in the middle you have these two types of cells. One's called enterochromophin cells, I think they might also be called ECL cells. And they also have these oxyntic or parietal cells. And then down towards the bottom, the deep part of these pits, you have these peptic chief cells. So the mucus cells secrete mucus, the enterochromophin cells release histamine, the oxyntic parietal cells release intrinsic factor and acid essentially, uh, I, yeah, H plus, and the peptic chief cells release pepsinogen which is broken down to pepsin which breaks down uh, peptides. So any, t any time there is, so I'm going to put it this way, so, well, I should move on. I'll get introduce all the pieces first and I'll explain. So next is pyloric glands. So in the distal 20% of your stomach, you have these pyloric glands. Pyloric glands also, towards the top, have these mucus secreting cells. And then a little different, differently, down inside they have gas gastrin cells, also known as G cells. And they also have somatostatin, or D cells. And that's very odd, you think they'd be an S cell, but no, it's a D cell because over here you have the S cells, which are which release secretin. So a lot of different players here. Now if we go down into the duodenum, you get even more cells. Now we have these S cells, the secretin cells, and we have the I cells. And the I cells <coughs> are going to release cholecystokinin in response to peptides and fat. And cholecystokinin does a lot of things. It, uh, it, it's going to slow peristalsis, it's going to release bile, it's going to make you have a feeling of satiety. It does that by <clears throat> essentially binding to, well, I'll go to that right now. Anyway, it creates a sense of uh, satiety, you feel full, and it causes release of the bile and also pancreatic enzymes. And there's a lot of pancreatic enzymes, there's pancreatic enzymes that are for breaking down fat, for example, lipase, phospholipase, or cholesterol esterase. It also has uh, also has enzyme pancreatic enzymes for breaking down proteins like trypsin and carboxypeptidase, I believe it's called. And it also has enzyme for breaking down carbs, and that's amylase. And it also has something that it releases called bicarbonate, and bicarbonate is something that is an acid buffer and it helps decrease the pH because you're going from a very acidic environment in the in the stomach and you need to go down into the other area you don't want to be as acidic. So that's what these I cells do. The I cells, you know, they release that closest to kinin. But these S cells, what they do is they release something called secretin. And secretin has a number of effects in the body. Secretin, one thing it does is it goes over, it uh, sends a reaction over to these Brunner's glands, and it tells these Brunner glands to secrete mucus. By the way, it's a low pH that triggers the release of secretin from these guys. So a really, really acidic environment is gonna tell these S cells, the secretin cells, to release secretin. And that's gonna tell 
the secretion is going to tell the Brunner's glands to release mucus. Okay, and then and the Brunner's glands are in the proximal duodenum as well. So the secretin that's released from the low pH is going to do more than just tell the Brunner's glands to release mucus. The secretin also goes over to these gastrin glands, or excuse me, gastrin cells. These gat or G cells. These these G cells do a lot of really important things. They release gastrin, which has a lot of effects in the stomach, but secretin from the S cells inhibits gastrin cells. So gastrin inhibited by secretin, okay? So a low pH is going to result in less gastrin being released, which should make sense with, with what's happening in the stomach, because gastrin ultimately triggers the release of, over here, of histamine from the enterochromophin cells, so the enterochromophin cells release histamine. The histamine triggers the parietal or axentic parietal cells to release hydrogen, and the hydrogen is going to make the stomach really acidic. Okay, So a lot of hydrogen is going to make a very acidic environment, well we want to turn that off so that, man, there's a bunch of steps going here, but essentially, so we want to inhibit this, this hydrogen. Well, it goes all the way back to ultimately secretin is going to inhibit this, this hydrogen through this process. Secretin inhibits gastrin. Gastrin, oh goodness, I might have been explaining this wrong. Oh yeah, it inhibits gastrin. Good, it inhibits the gastrin and gastrin inhibits this process. So secretin does more than that. Secretin, if you follow it over here, it, here it is at this, uh, at the, peptic chief cells, it also inhibits the release of pepsinogen. Or no, sorry, apologize. It triggers the release secretin. It inhibits gastrin cells, but it triggers the release of, of pepsinogen. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about this other cell here. So somatostat, that's another way I'm talking. This is the D cells. So D cells, if there's a very low pH, are going to release somatostatin. What does somatostatin do? Somatostatin triggers the G cells, or the, the gastrin cells, to stop. It has an inhibitory effect. There's actually quite a bit of things that have inhibitory effects on these gastrin cells. In fact, uh, um, or so, so two things have inhibitory effects. The S cells and the somatostatin, somatin cells will, uh, will have an inhibitory effect. But there's three things that have a an excitatory effect on these cells. The number one thing that triggers gastrin cells is going to be protein. That's the big kicker. Protein triggers gastrin cells to release gastrin. Gastrin triggers enterochromophin cells to release histamine. Histamine triggers oxyntic parietal cells to release acid, or H plus hydrogen, and then the acid triggers the peptic cells to release pepsinogen. Everything gets broken down. So protein's the big one, but also stimulation from the vagus Stimulation from the vagus actually triggers everything positive. Vagus is excite, excitatory, okay? So it, it increases all the stuff here. Parasympathetic, vagus. Also distension. So if, if there's some distension in the stomach, that'll also cause a release of gas. Okay, going over here now, let's cover this really shortly again. We have enterochromophin cells. Enterochromophin cells are gonna be triggered by gastrin. So gastrin, when it comes in contact with the enterochromophin cell, uh, the enterochromophin cell will release histamine. Histamine then will, will come down here. Histamine binds to the H2 receptors, as we learned earlier, and histamine binds to these H2 receptors in the parietal or oxyntic cells, and it, said, and it tells them to release acid. So they release acid, H+, an intrinsic factor. And then this acid goes down, triggers the peptic chief cells, along with the secretin cells and causes the release of pepsinogen. So a little indication here, the D cells, remember going back over here, where they are D cells, release somatostatin. Somatostatin puts the brakes on, okay? It's like uh, trying to create stasis or uh, stopping statins, somatostopping statin, okay? It stops things, puts the brakes on, inhibits this whole process and the vagus is speeding up the whole process, okay? So let's go into the last little parts of this. Going over here, also, I guess I'll walk over to this side. Going back over here, we have some more things. This is kind of messy and I apologize. 
Actually, I'm going to go up here first. Sorry, I'm talking about these parietal cells for just a moment. So parietal this is con confusing looking, but essentially what's going on is that over here is the lumen, so this is where stuff gets digested or released into the stomach. Back here is back where the blood and everything flows, extracellular fluids. So this is the apical surface, this is the basal surface. Okay. Essentially what's happening, chlorine and hydrogen are going to the opening, right? Because they're gonna make hydrochloric acid, which of course helps digest things. So, that, so chlorine this way, hydrogen this way. Also water this way. You gotta have those together, okay? So hydrogen, hydrogen chloride and water going to the lumen. What's going this way? Sodium's going this way. And uh, HCO3 is going this way and carbon dioxide is going this way. Okay, so everything, these, those things are coming back this way so they can get you know, taken up and taken other other parts of the body. And it seems like to me, sodium is mostly going back into extracellular fluid, but it kind of gets recycled here. And potassium seems to get recycled here because it's the potassium and hydrogen apparently that kind of travel with each other. Like one potassium this way for one hydrogen that way. There's like a pump that shoots, excuse me, shoots hydrogen, <laughs> Potassium this way, hydrogen that way. There we go. Potassium this way, hydrogen that way. And then this one does the sodium, this sodium this way, the potassium that way, sodium this way, the sodium gets taken back up again. So that's kind of the little process you see there. So going down to this part, this is this part's also pretty confusing. Hopefully I can well, you know, I think I may be okay. So on in your in your body you also have these adipocytes or adipocytes or whatever. And they release something called leptin. And leptin goes and does two things. It goes to the hypothalamus and also goes and triggers your bone to become compact bone, taking away the trabecular bone and increasing the, the compact bone. But anyway, this leptin goes to the hypothalamus. And when it goes to the hypothalamus, it's going to inhibit specific insulin, uh, excuse me, it's, it's going to inhibit your appetite, okay, so you don't, you're not hungry anymore. And it's also going to have, give you some insulin resistance, okay? So the leptin makes you stop being hungry. You left the table from the leptin because you're not hungry anymore. However, the ghrelin, which is released from epsilon cells in the pancreas, also found in the, in the fundus, can be induced, in de, in de, ghrelin uh, release can be induced from stress. Ghrelin goes to the hypothalamus and it induces hunger and growth hormone. So ghrelin makes you ghrelin for some grub, and leptin makes you want to leave the table. So ghrelin increases hunger, leptin decreases hunger, okay? And that is most everything. I want to cover again this pathway one last time in the two minutes that I have. So just follow me here. Okay, where do we start? We're going to start over here with the S cells, the D cells. S cells, they release secretin. Secretin inhibits G cells or gastrin cells and they excite the peptic chief cells. Okay, that's what these cells do. The, the G cells, they are the ones that start this whole cascade. Okay, they are excited by distension, vagus stimulation, but especially protein, gastrin, they are going to, oh, I also should have mentioned, sorry, the gastrin epithelial cells have leptin, mRNA, I don't know what the heck that's supposed to be. But anyways, so the gastrin cells, they're gonna trigger the enterochromophin cells to release histamine. The histamine triggers the auxentic parietal cells to release, release intrinsic factor and hydrogen, and the hydrogen triggers the peptic chief cells to release pepsinogen. And that is basically how it works.